<laughs> Streaming live from the far side of Enceladus, I am your host, Phelan, and joining us today are co-hosts Castor, Attica, and Gaskell. Hey, oh. Gaster here. Uh, I'm Fox. So, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it today. Uh, what is our first our news? Uh, starting up here, uh, the Hurricane Harvey thing has really been dominating the news, and I, I actually thought we should start with that. Uh, did anybody see the uh, the Antifa stories uh, in regards to Harvey? Um, I've seen them, but what I'm trying to figure out is how the news... Like, I haven't seen any pictures of a bunch of people dressed entirely in black uh, in a bunch of riot gear handing out food up to their waist in water. So how did they figure out that it was like, quote, Antifa? Because they, they must have, they, they, someone either must have told them, because, because naturally the first inclination of the news media would have been to label it something other, it would have been the DSA is helping local people or, you know, uh, activists. So I'm trying to figure out how they like even put two and two together. It's just leftist organizations actually going out and doing a like kind of just aid for their fellow citizens, I suppose. It's not it's not black block, of course. Like, yeah. I think a lot of it's more self identification. There's a section. I guess... in... oh, sorry. Well, go ahead. Uh, you're you're fine. Um, there's a section in a in an article about it that was saying how, like. There's a lot of organization of anarchists, like even back before Katrina, where they kind of had networks and it only uh, got bigger after Katrina. So like they, this isn't the first time they've been doing stuff like this. It's kind of been like there's a big overlap of people in Antifa and people that are in anarchist organization. And um, a lot of people kind of identify as anarchists are in Antifa, perhaps. And um, it's kind of like Antifa is kind of playing on or no sorry it's kind of a they, they go and they they overlap basically it's like these people yeah yeah like people who tend to be like anti-fascists surprise surprise are very much so pro-humanitarian of course they, well ex exactly yeah i mean i i know of course that like the the, the point of intersection of anyone who does dress up um in black is going to have uh, alphabet soup upon alphabet soup after their name of organizations they're a part of i'm trying to figure out how the news media which wants sound bites and doesn't really care to look into anything all that hard because they've already they already have their story written when they start they just need the names to fill in the pieces um how they put those two and two together i guess i'm more that that they did i actually think it's kind of a good thing that they did put it together like this because this actually runs counter to their narrative on uh, Antifa. Yeah, they get they always try and push how they're apparently like always violent t terrorists, quote unquote, somehow. But you know, like they don't really try and provoke. Well, I shouldn't say that, but most of the time, like they don't really go out in with terrorist intentions or out to like protect people against like literal, like we literally have like fascists and like white supremacists on the street carrying guns like and the police won't do anything like i mean so gotta have something in there to protect people because like our police force isn't doing it and it's like okay yeah it you, you have to be careful with the media just because they have something that they're trying to sell to you in the story. They don't really care about doing, like, investigative, like, investigative journalism anymore. It's just more of, okay, what makes people more likely to vote a certain way? What, what makes people more likely to get certain, like, that? It's just, like, activism in general. Like, they, they of course, want to organize things because they are, like, the, uh, they're a part of, like, the political elite, basically. They don't want, like, any type of, like, a status quo being uh, criticized or anything like that. So, a movement like it, like, people, people like... Sorry, there's just, like, a lot of background noise really shit. Um, 
Hey, Attica, maybe, maybe you should use a, like, push to talk or maybe a, or meeting yourself when you type because your microphone kind of picks it up a bit. Uh, we can, we can is this for is now. there a, a talk button? Yeah, yeah it like, looks like you're... go to user settings, which is the gear um, you'll see at the bottom left area okay. of, your, of Discord. And then under voice, there'll be a push to talk option. And then you can bind a button to push to talk. Yeah, I use my right control button. I, I have it set up so that I mute myself whenever I have to type, but yeah, oh, we could also like cut this part out of the, well, I don't know. This is the pilot after all. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's 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 going to be kind of shambled together hap haphazardly, but. I can oh, fix well. it in post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with um, I was looking through this article and it's just saying how, like, people don't trust the like, or, the, or sorry, let me re restart this. It's kind of like, uh, people are more willing to trust a smaller organization, like, uh, like for example, these anarchist organizations. Like one of them, for example, is Houston's Anarchist Black Cross, which is one of the groups that are somewhat affiliated with uh, some Antifa, Antifa members, I believe. Um, and it's like people would rather trust people that are there than big, uh, like court, like basically big company, uh, organizations like, well, not really company, but big organizations like the Red Cross, because like it's kind of well known by now that it's just a money sink and they, the, yeah, you don't know where your money's money. going. Like in this article, for example, it, it was saying how Red Cross was caught. Red Cross only made something like six houses for displaced Haitians after the earthquakes in 2010, despite raising like half a billion dollars. Like the funds aren't put towards marginalized people who are like they who can't really do anything about their situation. It's a horrible mishandling of resources. And that's incredibly ironic because the Red Cross was started um, with spontaneous action by, I forget what nationality it was from, but he was in Italy. Um, I think Italy was at war with Prussia at the time. And Prussia had invaded a northern Italian town. Uh, this guy just happened to be there um, and just sort of spontaneously started setting up beds and hospitals and the neighborhoods came together and they donated beds and hospitals and medicine like a really anarchist type thing to do is what led to the creation of the Red Cross. Yeah, the problem with Red Cross is it's it's kind of being it's a it's a nonprofit organization, but it's basically being set up and run like a corporation at this point. And it's it just the gross mishandling of money is just kinda obvious to the point where people like even like normal people don't even trust it. And it's because of organizations like the Red Cross, it makes people think about what they're donating to, which is kind of good in a sense, but it's still horrible that uh, like this happens in the first place. Yeah. I, I think another detail in this is the why, you know, a lot of people would, or organizing with these people and whatnot, um, you know, the anarchists and, and everything, is because they're part of the community. Yeah. Like, yeah. These, you know, because when it all comes down to it, uh, anarchists and communists, socialists, et cetera, um, these people are all part of the community, like Gaskell said. They're not for-profit entities, you know, or even nonprofit corporations, for instance, where they do have this need to make money. Instead, they're just people coming together within the community to do good, or maybe people coming together from a nearby community or somewhere else coming in, you know, to help. That's exactly it. Like you, you know who, like your neighbors are. You're you're not worried about like some third party who you are actually the like um funding without your knowledge, things like that. Yeah. 
Although I, I do have to admit, I, I was I was very proud reading this this news and everything. I was very happy to hear this because not only the the shift in narrative, you know, then you go on Twitter and it's just like, okay, so what what are the uh, white nationalists doing today? And oh wait, there's a, a white nationalist Twitter feed uh, bragging about all the iPads that they've taken from homes. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, there's that. Um, so I'm just glad that the narrative did not prevail that Black Bloc, uh, you know, is a bunch of people that, you know, just go out and destroy stuff, you know. And it's, it's, it's good to see positive press. One thing, it's perfect, uh, um, like, I guess I'll use the term liberal bait, too, because it's the exact kind of article they like to read, right? Like, uh, um, you know, random... X community action goes and helps a bunch of people uh, feel good story, right? So like all of them who are saying Antifa is this violent terrorist organization and I'm going to shoot myself in the foot by spreading the white nationalist narrative. Uh, now they get to be shown this and now they spread this because this is the exact kind of thing that they talk about at Starbucks. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's just kind of how media has gotten to a point where, like, they they put thing, basically they're trying to get people to click on their articles to get ad revenue. Like, this is kind of how media has got to a point. It's almost partially dishonest, but when something good comes along that's good publicity, it does help it spread like that. And, yeah. And so, so what are you guys' thoughts on this whole narrative that the media is? The only um, negative thing about it is the, it's one article in a sea of endless articles of look at these violent Antifa, and eventually it's going to become uh, it's 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 going to get buried among the, the yeah. trash and the garbage that's being spread out. And of course, yeah, you, you are right. And this actually gets us to our, our second point actually today. Um, although on the notes, it's, it's probably point number like, I don't know, six or something like that, um, is the narrative uh, that the media is building here. And it is a very dangerous one because they're basically spreading the idea of moral equivalency between Antifa and uh, you know the neo Nazis, and this is a very dangerous conversation that's being had here. And it's something that was done, you know, the first time we dealt with these problems with, you know, the first Nazis. Uh, I saw a, a, a meme that I don't know if you can call it a meme because it was just a, a clip of an old newspaper where the news was blaming the anti fascists for starting violence at the Nazi rally. The, the American Nazi rally. Um, and uh, so it, it's expected. I mean, it's not it's not so much that it's a bunch of people dressed up in black hitting people. It's a bunch of people, just people, at least it's what the narrative says. But it's a, it's a bunch of people who fundamentally at the same time are challenging the status quo. So it, it's the media's self-preservation um to convince these you know the public that these people who are doing good are actually really really bad um regardless of whatever the white nationalists are doing so white nationalists support the status quo um in uh in entirety well as you guys know actually if they don't support the status quo they support fucking they want to go back to something more primal i literally see people now arguing for feudalism fascism isn't good enough we need an actual monarchy. That's that's literally what they're begging for right now, for whatever reason. Like, it, it's just it's really amazing to see a bunch of dead, like, brain dead people trying to equate humanitarian relief, like at, like efforts to actually help fellow Americans, being equated to fascism. It's it's just ridiculous at this point, to be honest. Like they're trying to equate, like, they're trying to equate something to like that just is not level at all, like. They're trying to make some narrative of how, like, they've been pushing a narrative of how, like, the Soviet, or not, or how, like, communism has killed X number of people. But then when you go and look at how they, like, got to that number, it's, it's a lot of very out there reasons. Like, it's, it's, it's a big stretch. It's, and that falls into the whole thing of, 
of trying to be, like. Did sorry, you did you die under communism? Well, communism obviously killed you. <laughs> yep. And then it pushes that in the narrative as well. They're trying to like to show. Oh, but look at the other side. Look how smashy smashy they are. Well, meanwhile, like the people on the right get away with literal murder. Like there's some article or something I saw recently that showed that like 10 people have died as a result like in 2017 as a result of j this rising movement uh from the right like you know we have charlottesville but before that there was something where like some guy on a bus stabbed a bunch of people and two of them died one of them was a guy in the navy and these are just been... that, that guy was actually at a lot of um, like, uh quote-unquote free speech rallies the one that actually did he um what was it Two, I, it was like two, um, just like random guys in the street were defending this one. Um, I think she was like a Muslim woman, who he just randomly started like um harassing. But this is a big thing a lot of people don't realize. the The far right in the United States kills at least three hundred people per year. So I mean, yeah. it's it's not like yeah, like this is something that you can't really compare. Like, oh shoot, um, Antifa might randomly attack like a reporter sometimes because the reporter is getting in their face and trying to record them when they're trying to obviously conceal their like their cells for obvious reasons. I mean, people are out to get them. Well, um, it, it's just not a comparison. If you get punched, that's 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 nowhere near as bad as being murdered, being stabbed to death, getting shot up at random like uh just because you went to uh like planned parenthood or something. You know, it's a ridiculous comparison. But um just something really funny. The right actually did try and help people inside of Houston, but they, they went with, um, they're basically right-wing militias. And I, I don't see the point of bringing guns to, uh, to people who are basically fucking without food and water. Like, wh what's the point of bringing guns, dude? I think that... They're obviously looking for a fight. Like, it's not even... Yep. They're take, yeah, they're taking advantage of the situation. Really. I don't I, know. I think uh, they've seen too many apocalypse movies. Yeah, this is a Mad Max type shit they're trying to show. They've, they, 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 believe, they believe in a narrative where they believe that people that are not of the white race are somehow violent mongoloids or some, something to that extent. Where they generally believe that, like, other people, or, like, some uh, certain types of people are literally just rabid animals. And when you have that narrative drilled in your head enough, like, of course you're going to, like, want to take a gun out with you. Um, the, uh, the, the, the thing about, um, them wanting to uphold the status quo, like, they don't challenge any, um, they don't challenge the, uh, relationship between people and their employer. They don't challenge the relationship between people and the world. They, um, they don't threaten power in terms of the media, in terms of businesses. They're squarely on their side in a completely nonsensical way, um, which is why the media wants to vilify uh, Antifa um, rather than the white nationalists. The, the white nationalists buy things. Yeah, like, the big thing is just the big the following in general, where on the right, you have those who want to up, uphold a status quo and uphold things like, um, just, like, just, uh, uh, like, the fact where they just want to uphold something, or a system that benefits them, and those from the left, from Antifa, they, they support a kind of movement where it goes against the interests of, like, the big banks and just of capital in general where um like, like that could basically just spell it out where like people on the left they support things like unions and whatever and okay no this is actually kind of bad i i should i should reword this <laughs> um well just think about it like this i mean antifa what if, what if they're they're anti-capitalist they're against uh like the status quo and systems like that they 
they oppose everything that the media stands for right now. While the alt right, they're controversial, just like Antifa, but they don't actually challenge anything. So you can make profit off of people who, uh, oh yeah, they say these outlandish things, but they don't really, they don't necessarily question. Um, I guess what you could consider just like like the system that we're in right now, like this uh, American capitalism. They don't question the old establishment um, in our society of like what thing what's been built on like generation on generation, like. Yeah. They, they, like this, this is the thing too. Like they pretend they stand for like this, the quote unquote like Western liberal values. They they pretend, but they honestly don't. Um, these people kind of just use it as like a guide, especially free speech. A lot of the time, like they say, "Oh yeah, we value like free speech," but this is just something they use to protect them from just being curb stomped, like just beat the fuck out. Honestly, it's the weaponization of liberalism. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's they're becoming. Like, Liberals don't even understand this. This is what really aggravates me. They're being used as a shield for these people. And they don't understand why people are getting pissed at them. It's, it's obviously because you're defending people who will ultimately destroy you and everything that you supposedly stand for. Liberals don't understand that. But, uh, yeah, like, the media, the media is going to side with the alt-right indirectly just because you can make money off of them because they're not, they're not going to be like – they're not going to call out people who are actually giving them a platform, which the media is doing. So, I don't know. I think that they do not fully understand the threat. And they will not understand the threat until it is meeting at their door. I think there's another part where they just don't care because it doesn't have... it. it like, the threat has nothing... It, it's not a threat to their profit motive. Like, in supporting white nationalists, and if they even, even say if they came to power, it wouldn't be a threat to, like, their process of... Uh, just making profit whereas I mean, with antifa like they want to bring about things like like they care about things like uh health for example or, or just socialist movement of things like nationalizing industry which goes against their interests of uh just like a profit like the whole whole, whole profit motive that is just dominating industry i mean that's the thing i mean capitalists tend to side with fascists Look at like uh like Coca Cola, IBM, uh Ford, like inside of like Nazi Germany. They they yeah. did, yeah. It's something like I mean, what is what is fascism but just <laughs> I don't even fucking know. Well, I mean it, it literally yeah. is like Mussolini defined fascism as being really nothing more than corporatism. Uh, his yeah, it's centralized the... company. Countries think yeah being controlled like the state itself right right everything else within fascism uh, according to Mussolini and I believe is what was the name uh, Gentelli or something like that was everything else was window dressing to achieve that goal the big thing with fascism in general with uh, in relation to the private uh, private industry is like people try and claim that like, the Nazi party were socialists somehow, but they actually aren't. Like when you look into how they actually operated, like they gave concessions to the corporations of the time and they like favored them. They, like the term privatization actually came from what was happening in Nazi Germany where like lots of uh, like centrally organized organizations i guess you could call them were more or less privatized and put into the hands of uh like yeah just put in private hands and everything like that right i, and, I wish i had the article up for that but like, right it's and the quote and he is a little bit re reactionary but to um and jim mars in his book uh rise of the fourth reich uh he actually uh stated that uh, one of the reasons that the Nazis chose the term Third Reich was because it was both the word for rulership but also the word for rich and or wealthy in German. And so it had this double entendre of being the rule of the wealthy. So this is Reaganomics before Reaganomics? No. 
Not really, because it didn't have the freedom aspect that Reaganomics had. Um, because it, at least there, they there was there was always a, a window dressing with with Reaganomics that uh, you know it was it was to promote freedom in, in some sense, uh, whereas Nazism was just outwardly yeah, against us authoritarian. I mean, that's a, that's a big thing. I think we should like tell uh, the field right. They they they. Honestly, they, they think this is going to be some type of a, like, white utopia. Not necessarily. The state controls who you reproduce with. It's like, what are you guys even on? This is, th these are your rights. These are your rights getting cut off, too. So, yeah, get out of here with that, my dudes. They, they the don't thing... actually care about freedom and stuff like that. They use that as a face to try and seem more tolerable and try and paint themselves as, like, more accepting to the average person. Like, they really don't care about free speech, and they just use that as a face out to try and get their message across. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I agree with that. It's just a guy's they use. But they, they think it's in the end it's something that's going to benefit them, but they don't realize collectivism, in the end, doesn't care about the individual. It's all about the group, and it's just it's going to fuck them over because they just become a pawn, and you'll, you'll stay a pawn consistently forever. The thing is, they're happy being pawns though to them it, it it is an acceptable trade-off to put themselves into slavery and debt and make themselves just a complete uh accessory utility to the state for uh the, the exchange of being superior than everyone else they won't care if they live in a shack with no electricity uh, no running water, but as long as they're better than the black man, that's an acceptable trade-off to them because these are people who are so unable to function in a regular, uh, integrated, multicultural world that for them to have... <laughs> it, it, it's sad and it's crazy. It, this is the exchange they're willing to make to have a social life. One thing I do find really funny is a lot like these people feel, oh, oh the evil globalization is taking our jobs away, it's killing America. It's not necessarily because I mean, if you look at like one of the benefits of it, like just like looking at migrants in general, people who come into the country are typically economic migrants. They're coming in for low wage jobs to somehow work them way up, like their way up, right? So it's really taking away jobs that you probably wouldn't want to do in the first place. Um, I would really be interested in seeing like a psychological study on just the alt right in general. I'm fairly certain what the thing is. Really, this is more of just something. Either it's insecurity, right? They they were raised in this very like bourgeois family. They never met anyone who was two tones too dark because no one else went outside. So it, it's it's shit like that. Like they're just either insecure about like just seeing different people, or they they have some type of OCD where everything has to be perfectly the same. Like they this is what they this is what they want. It's it's unrealistic. They have some conception of somehow like it's it's somehow like people of other races are taking their jobs, quote unquote. But then if they're faced with the opportunity to take the job that these people are like th that these people take, they're they think they're above it. Like they go on about yeah. how like um, it's your fault working at McDonald's that you're getting paid so low. Like you should go for, you should go for a job that or a better paying job. But in the meantime, like they're somehow upset about people taking jobs like this that aren't, uh, that, that just aren't white. And don't even suggest that they work in agriculture. <laughs> oh God, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, you you go tell them to pick, you know, pick tomatoes or something, and Strawberry. yeah. The strawberries are, are the hard ones. Up like, oh, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm above that. Uh, picking strawberries is very difficult. In fact, uh, you uh, there's no machine that can do it, uh, to my knowledge, anyway. Or at least that was how it was a few years ago. And uh, okay, yeah, it's definitely like, you know, yeah, it's one of the more difficult agricultural tasks. Yeah, it's a delicate food. I mean, fruit. Uh, you can't really just plug a machine up and do it. Not yet, at least. I'm fairly certain, like, eight years down the line, they're definitely going to be um, just, like, plants. I mean, like, machines that, like, can uh, pick, 
take them properly. Yeah. But um, you know what? Actually, let's let's talk about that real quick. Donald Trump is saying he's he's bringing back companies inside the United States when really he's just, he's just bringing back the factories. There's no workers in these factories anymore because everything's automated, and I, it's it's really disappointing to me to see a bunch of people actually falling for that because it's really it's really just them benefiting companies like Foxconn. There there's virtually no workers there. What? It's just it's really disgusting to see. Yeah. Well, we all saw a couple of weeks ago that the right really loves their statues. And what better of a statue than a giant real-life statue of a fully functioning factory with no workers? What a better statue for America. God. Yeah, like, there's actually like a few economic projections uh, that have been going around where like at least by 2050 or 2055 about like at least half of the GDP in North America in the, or the United States or in North America um, is going to be automated. Like, what do you think is going to happen to job or happen to the yeah, like, yeah, just like, to unemployment? Like there's going to be mass unemployment and somehow they're so against welfare where they're going to want, they're going to want it in a few decades here when like robots have literally taken over half the jobs and the republicans will give it to them but it won't be called welfare it'll come at like some kind of exchange of like public service like ev everyone will basically be cleaning the freeway in exchange for like <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay so this brings up a question over my head is ubi is universal basic income socialism is it technically the point at which you're no longer a capitalist economy, you are now a market socialist economy, which is a thing. It, Yugoslavia was a market socialist country. Is it now a market socialist economy because everyone is being paid a dividend of the uh, profit of all of the industry in the country? I think it's fair. I, I, I think it's a, it, it is in a way a fair assessment. It depends on the implementation. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm fairly certain what's going to happen. It's not going to be people get like their fair share. Like, it's definitely going to be like the owners of these factories are still going to get a large percentage of the income. It's still going to fa It's going to be a system that still favors these people. But the, the typical, like the average Joe, they're definitely going to get some equal distribution. Like, me and you, probably, like, the same, um, just check from the state, basically. Well, it would be a check from the state, and you'd probably have to actually have a job in order to get it doing something. Yeah, I'm fairly certain. They probably still want you to be active or something. It's not going to be, like, uh, you're just kind of doing your own thing. No, you're still going to have to do some type of labor. Like, what's going to have to happen, like, for um, for unemployment to not go nuts, basically, is either have things have the work or have your average work day shortened to six hours or four hours a day with full benefits of uh, being considered a full-time job or well, I don't know what other alternative there would be is you well, know, like when you have literally like when you get have more and more jobs being automated you know like it doesn't really create it like there's gonna be fewer and fewer jobs and there's gonna be there's just there's gonna be no net no there's not gonna be any no jobs available for a huge portion of the population well and you, you do know that uh back in the 30s actually during the great depression one of the big proposals was actually um there were several there's a 30-hour work week a 36-hour work week basically there are several proposals to shave off hours on the work week uh and then world war ii happened Yep. So part of my descent into socialism has been the slow acknowledging has been this no slow acknowledging that Roosevelt wasn't actually um, the great uh, public servant that everyone credits him for being and when compared to what the rest of the world was doing socialism wise even countries that weren't actually um 
you know, really socialist. Um, you know, R Roosevelt did a lot. He can be credited for preventing fascism in the United States because he was smart enough to realize that people's identity and and um, their uh, their entire being is connected to their work. And by creating things like the Tennessee River Valley and and those public work programs, he saved the identity of people that fascism normally preys upon to recruit people. The uh, I mean, look at how many angry, basically unfucked white 20-year-olds there are in the alt-right who can't find jobs. Like, I read those alt furry logs. It's all complaining about how they don't have jobs. So they don't have jobs. So they're, they think in their incredibly narrow worldview, they can't attract women. So they can't have <laughs> sex. So they can't do what they're supposed to do and get married. Like, so they need fascism and they need a strong leader to force all the women to be subservient to them. So Roosevelt recognized that people's um, identity stems so much from their ability to produce um, in an economy, regardless of whether that economy is. I think that is what can be most credited as saving the U.S. from fascism at that point in time. But he still is not like, like Upton Sinclair ran for governor of California um, and Roosevelt kind of snubbed him and didn't contribute to the campaign, didn't endorse him and made sure the Democratic Party, it's like history repeating itself, made sure the Democratic Party didn't actually fund him. Uh, and the result was an extremely greedy Republican from Hollywood won the governorship of California. Right. Well, the other part of, you know, this whole, you know, rise of fascism thing, uh, it's not just the, you know, lack of jobs, but also, the, you know, the work itself, the nature and relation to the work. Um, Marx basically predicted that something like fascism would actually arise out of just alienation. And that seems to be building up within the working class because a lot of these people that, that are, you know, tending towards fascism, you know, there's a good chunk of them that don't have jobs. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. Uh, but there's also a good chunk that do have jobs uh, that, you know, spend vast amounts of money on, on, you know, organizing and stuff like that. And the reason that they feel the way that they do and put so much resources in it is because they feel alienated from their work, their culture, and just everything. Yeah, I mean, like, American people are, like, uh, they have an identity crisis. But just, like, one thing I, I want to add in there, it's it's really interesting. Boredom actually does lead to, like, uh, political extremism. So, I mean, that's just another thing. You have nothing else to do, so you're going to congregate with a bunch of weirdos on the internet and just kind of shit post on the dream society you would want. I saw some anarchist meme that essentially said, um, you know, if, if when a society abolishes all form of adventure, the only adventure left is the abolishment of that society. And I realized just how true that was because God, I remember like in the deep dark of like 2012, um, uh, how like me going to a Japanese grocery store was a height of excitement because it was new and it was different. And uh, how, how kind of sad that, that was that like when generations before got to like explore the world. Exactly. Like, for things. Yeah. Like make it to like a new system. Um, yeah. I mean, idle minds are dangerous, especially when they're on fucking 4chan. I mean, so the question is, I mean, so the question here is, is, you know, how do we combat this? How do we organize against it? And, and I think that Antifa is, is a large part, part of it. Uh, but like we were going over earlier, uh, the media is creating this narrative with Antifa that uh, is very negative and it, it is making an impression on people. Well, yeah, because it's a, it's a, um, it's a following. It, it's part of the left leftist following that 
puts the that threatens the profit of these big corporate media uh, organizations like like say you look at and you just have to look at a lot of uh news organizations they sorry news organizations like say msnbc is owned by comcast and of course that's why you don't really see so much net neutrality stuff on on msnbc like the whole rhetoric behind uh just leftism in general is a threat to like our capitalist society in a sense of a, a pro like the whole thing of profit and you know if more people kind of start to realize how much of their surpl uh, surplus production is being kind of siphoned from them and funneled into the corporate world they're like if people were more aware of this then there'd be more tendency for there to be a paradigm shift towards favoring the individual over these basically corporate conglomerates and so that leads to the question is is uh, what do we do to to organize and i think that you know one of the best things that we could do right now really is to start with you know the community um i think instead of you know or rather in addition to uh antifa uh the, you know leftists need to get out there and you know make themselves visible within the community you know as as a group as you know you know what they are and do things like you know clean up highways or you know get food to you know elderly people that can't afford it or whatever that way they have a deep-rooted connection in those communities there needs to be more action on the part of people from the left to like go out and do things and like actually like, i'm not saying that it hasn't hap been happening like it's actually it sounds like it has been happening for a while it's just that you don't really hear much about it um well i always I, one of the things i really liked about uh maoism uh is that uh within maoism there's this concept of uh, something called uh to serve the people uh which basically means that you know if you're going to be part of the party or if you're going to be part of the red army you literally have to serve the people and what that means is is you got to go out there and, and do things in addition to you know just being a party member or just being a member of the red army that's that's not enough you you actually have to you know walk the walk yeah like the big like the big problem facing us in our society today um if we want to have a like a focus on or sorry like the biggest problem facing us in get, uh, reaching our goals is the fact that in our society like the cultural bias is towards a kind of a selfish tone you know like people don't want to do anything for others because they don't think they'll get anything in return and it's just the whole notion of I i've got mine so fuck you well it's not it's not even that I have had conversations with people where I specifically kept it devoid of any ideology, brought up all of these socialist points without throwing in any words that I know the person I'm arguing with, or not even are you just talking with, would recognize. Um, and uh, they completely wholeheartedly agreed with it every single time. Um, the The spell that capitalism has all of society bound to is that people believe honestly believe that when they get up force feed themselves shower in five minutes and drive out the driveway or get on the bus more likely with their eyes half closed still that they're somehow going on earning their living that they are somehow uh going out and not taking a handout when that's exactly what it is a wage is a handout a wage is being paid the bare minimum you need to be able to keep going to work and and nothing more so that you can never actually advance out of that situation and no one sees how all of their labor is producing all of the profit for the very same person who says that they need to earn their living when that person does nothing more than simply legally on a piece of paper own 
whatever the hell that the people are working at, whether it's a clothing store or a corporate tower or an actual legit factory, because that's that's the example most easily understood. I think they do see it. I mean, you've seen it in the alt furry logs. They they get close. They really do get close to it. And they oh, just man. cannot make <laughs> the leap into it because they're so consumed by their own prejudice, prejudices and, and worldviews that they can't let it happen. That once they go down that, that thought line, it it's there and then it stops. It's like they, you know, and sometimes I don't even think they even realize consciously what they've said. No, they don't. And then they don't register it to, oh, but everything else that I believe is counter to this. And so they are just cognitively unwilling to accept those terms. But, man, I will say, is it not funny that you see that within fascist communities? And and I've not only, I've not only seen it in the alt furry logs, but just Discord logs of... Other left, or not other left, uh, other fascists. How did I make that? I am just tired, I guess. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people are attracted Don't you know, to. Don't like, the real fascist. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people that are attracted to that because because they're disenfranchised. They realize there's something wrong. Yeah, they they, and they do. Unfo- unfortunately, get pushed into a narrative where it's somehow a racial thing, where in reality it's actually just the it's just how things are distributed in our society. Like, you know, the, the, the if you look at some charts that look at how things have been changing, like, say, for example, back in the 70s, uh, people were paid closer to closer to their output. Like, they were paid better for, or they were, they were paid for what, more for what they were worth, like for what the production put out for the company compared to what they got compensated for. And I've just seen graphs of... It's uh, just stagnated. It's like things are stagnated and things have gotten to a point where compared to the 70s to today, people put out about two point times more the uh, production output value than what they actually get paid. Like the And it's only going up. And if you look at how like the middle class is dying, people are struggling to even put a roof over their heads. And yet look at the corporate world and they're booming they're doing fucking fantastic right now and, and you know it just kind of goes back to the whole thing like say you go to an auto like say you go to a an auto auto manufacturer facility where the worker there ends up having to pay an effective 40 percent tax while the corporation itself pays like two percent or even less through loopholes and tax havens and it's really just like the corporate the corporate industry is taking over like it's to a point where it's rivaling nationality in the, in how much power they hold in the world and the justification for that that's always given is always well they're the job creators but then no one ever takes that further no one ever takes that further and thinks like well wait okay uh, why do we necessarily need all these low-paying jobs? Like, or if it's they're... amazing how it's amazing how how uh, few people will like finish a thought through to the end. Like, it, it sounds like a really high schoolish evaluation of of it, but it's like you know the the, the thirty minute television. Uh, melodrama has made it so like people can't finish their thought before they have to go to a next one otherwise people would see the logical conclusion of well okay they're job creators but these jobs don't pay anyone enough to actually live other than to keep working at that job so what's the point this actually reminds me of a quote uh, from like I, I just started reading uh, Lenin's uh, Satan, the Satan Revolution and there's a quote in it. Let me see if I can just find it real quick in Telegram even. Um, and it was something to the effect of... Um, hold on, let me just flip through here. Um, oh, here we go. He 
he basically kind of said how in I think I'll just read it word for word here. Um, the freedom established in the freest capitalist democracies ha was fully enjoyable only by the rich, who could own newspapers and were not exhausted by the material and spiritual grind of poverty. Lenin contended that economic capitalism prevented most people from influencing the politics of any capitalist society. Like, in our society, like, in North American society, we claim that we're all about freedom, that we're all about like, you know, just individual liberties and all that, where in the reality of this of this is just that the only people that get to experience these concessions are those that are wealthy, those are that within, like, the top 10% margin or, or somewhere around there. And, like, it's just things are getting to a point where, like, you know, it's just, like, we claim to have these freedoms, but we don't have access to them because of, through legal loopholes. We're basically... Like through, you like have the basically. freedoms that you can afford. Yeah, basically, and then it's to a point where, you know, like you don't have, you don't really have these freedoms because you don't just don't have access to them. That's the biggest thing. Well, I mean, America was kind of unfortunately, and that in in a way is its downfall. Was set up with that idea in mind. It wasn't set up with this idea of equality from the beginning. It no, in no ways was even close to that. I mean, you're talking about a country where the only people that could initially vote uh, were property owning males who were over the age of twenty one. This kind of brings up another point of how just, like, democracy as we think we perceive it is nowhere near what it actually is. Like, our system of representative democracy is just not working. It's not, like, people think that they get to influence what happens, but it, it's not really true. Like, you could vote for a party and hope that your representative will support things you want to, but it just doesn't happen like for either party for republican or democratic and that's how it is in most quote-unquote democracies it's all representative democracies where you know like today like if people if like say in the u.s if people really do believe in the whole rhetoric of freedom and democracy is the way of is the way to go then why haven't they imp been implementing things for direct democracy like we have the technology to set up things for people to vote on issues like say for like say for example if they're going to legalize cannabis nationwide they could have a, a referendum nationwide and you know like they could even support system like machine or something like that like you would set up at a local post office well it's intentional it's it's designed so that the elite of the country and that's how it's always been whether it's it was plantation owners and you know factory owners etc to you know today with it being financiers financiers you know CEOs etc it's intentional that it's set up in that way uh, because you know the business class can go in and influence government yep that's that's exactly it right there like like the whole thing of democracy in the, or the reality of democracy today is that like the common person doesn't get a say we don't have any like we're, we're not even really relevant in democracy like the only ones that are really relevant are those who have all the capital and that's not really good for the average person <laughs> the whole thing is like the whole yeah, I, I do think that we're getting getting there, uh, a li making some small inroads. I, I don't know if you guys saw it, uh, but one of the things I did include in, in the notes here for today uh, uh, was the, the wildcat strike at, uh, at a Target in Virginia. And so I, I do think that workers are starting to get it. And it could just be that, you know, things are getting desperate so people have to do desperate things and you know when i see things like that where you know workers are getting together and these these were workers that did not have an existing union in place and that's what makes us all the more stronger because that kind of gives me hope you know with you know target of course doesn't have a union you know but you know the biggest employer in the country right now is walmart and they're definitely not union they're very much anti-union 
and there's a millions of these people that work these kind of jobs uh, that uh, you know get the stick on on this and this was something that was organized because of the actions of a single manager just acting like an absolute tyrant you know harassing people etc and these people got together over this and I think that if you know more workers you know were to you know get together over you know larger things like their own living conditions it can change a lot of things really fast yeah it's well there's a part to that where you know like strikes aren't really a new thing it's just that it's kind of nice to see that people like working at target uh like they've like they had the courage to send up to target and like pull a strike despite not being in a union like they could have very easily all been fired and replaced like that's just how things are these days where you know like half the time if people try this they'll just be fired on the spot and but something that kind of makes me worry at the same time though is that you know things have gotten so bad that people have to strike like this like they are forced to essentially and you know, like, I was looking through that, I read through that article, and it was saying that, like, they sent complaints to, like, the higher-ups at Target, and they did, they didn't do anything, and it took this for an investigation even to be launched, and it's just, you know, like, this kind of thing obviously isn't new, and... Well, it's just, like, I always like to compare capitalism, uh, you know, to this idea of there being thousands of economic silos. Like, you know, when, when you have government, you have like one silo, one thing. And that, you know, that's, you know, where your, your tyranny is, is executed down from. Uh, whereas, you know, like in a capitalist economy, um, what you have is you have exerted over the lives of people thousands of different silos that each executes their own tyranny, you know, to, you know, various levels, you know, and what that could be. And some are more lenient than others, uh, but it could, you know, it's still tyrannical in its nature. Well, essentially, when you look at a hierarchy of a corporation, like it in itself could be considered like, oh, how do I want to put this? I don't want to say like a, nation in itself but they operate in a kind of hierarchy and kind of like it's it's its own entity like it's kind of like a nation within a nation in a sense especially with these massive corporations they have like walmart and just everything else in general right i i'd actually i I more compare it to like a cult to be honest with you because i don't know if you've ever worked retail or in sales of, of any sort I, you know what I'm talking about. Like, they, they, they beat language into you. Like, they will just use certain terms over and over again. Uh, and there's certain terms that they will always use in every case. And it's just to drill it into you. Like, this is, this is what happens, you know, you know that kind of thing. Um, for instance, like, coaching uh, was a, was a uh, good term that uh, they like to use now like uh, you're not being reprimanded for something you're being coached for something and the Mm. thing is is that same term also just gets used if you know the manager just wants to you know pull you aside or speak to you or if the manager wants to take you and train somebody else you're not training them you're coaching them so they're using this you know language in a very tricky way to kind of indoctrinate you into you know the system and the biggest, sorry. And they also do this with you know, like in retail with products too, and and whatnot. Uh, they'll always use certain terms around certain products, etc. Yeah, like I, I, I think I do. I have actually seen some of this in some places, like especially with like at one point I've worked for Costco, and like they do have like special terms and stuff like that for some things and they explain things in very specific ways and it's it's actually pretty insidious when you think about it and another thing i just kind of want to touch on is like with how like corp like how corporate structure is today um especially like corporate structure in the workplace where it's very 
it's a very author authoritative structure if you really look at it like it's and in many cases like the workers can't have a say if they say anything that goes against the company they could be just fired on the spot and just cast aside oh but and you know like kind of like what you're saying with the silo ideas we just have a whole bunch of different or like author authoritarian uh, organizations but gackle nation but gackle we have an open door policy <laughs> right yeah that's one of the terms they like to throw at you it's the open door policy you know we don't need a union here at corp co the only open door policy that they or the only open door policy they really believe in is opening the door to boot your ass out from, out from that job if you say anything out of line you know like you can't do you can't really criticize the company you're working for because then that, that puts you in jeopardy and that's just how it is across like across your society and it's getting worse and worse like we're we're shifting from the small business oriented or orientated uh kind of capitalist society to just in all in an oligar oligarchical society and oh, like that's one big thing that really irritates me when you have people on the right that they're they swear up and down that government is killing small businesses and maybe to an extent they're right in the sense of we're supporting these big corporations just essentially taking over like that like, the happening. thing is that people on the right they support policies that end up hurting small businesses and that and policies that are killing small business and like yeah <laughs> and caster you were gonna say something oh no he said it basically i mean like that's that's a funny thing about conservatives he said they 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 try and pretend like they are the party of like the um, working class and things like that. When not really, I mean, conservatives they have two groups that they that they really uh, pander to. It's typically like the the the, um, the socially conservative type folks who basically consider everything in the Bible to be like literal accounts of things that actually happen, and then like um just lobbyists like people who who um. Who are in favor of just like big business, I suppose. Like these are the people that fund them. I'm sorry, it's it's fucking late. Holy shit! I apologize. Oh, that's okay. It is definitely getting late here. Uh, this is actually about the time that I turn in. Uh, so I actually think that uh, that'll be uh, the end of the show today here. Unless anybody else had anybody anything else to add today. I have three. For your toothbrush. You had three things. I no. Well, yes. Technically, I have three kittens. Anyone want a kitten? I thought. I don't like. I thought you said you had three things to add. I didn't realize you were going to be adding kittens into our lives. Yeah, I'm going to try to like hawk my kittens over uh, um, our leftist podcast. Caster, you want a kitten, right? I'm fi I no, I apologize. I cannot take any kittens right now. I know. I'm joking. No. I Funny already thing. have enough pussy in my life right now. I am satisfied. Oh, heck, this voice is woman in, in, in the good puss. Funny thing yeah. is, I'm actually, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm actually looking for a kitten, but I kind of probably live very far away from you. <laughs> I mean, you could send it through the internet. I mean, you know, just bring it over. He's. Not, you wouldn't download you just, a kitten, would you? He's just gonna poke some holes in the box so that it gets there. He can overnight it, dude. I mean, hey, I mean, people since like the borders coming, I mean, since like the walls coming up, people are using drone drones to um send cross. Holy fuck! People are using drones to send drugs across the border. So I mean, why can't you do it with kittens? Oh, that was gonna happen anyway, regardless of yeah, the wall. I just find that really funny. Like, there's no actual argument defending the wall at all. Even if you were to put solar panels on it, the cost of putting them on and maintaining them would defeat the purpose. Honestly. Solar powered wallways. <laughs> and that people don't oh, I'm sorry. Is no, something that people don't realize is that with the wall, like there's already basically 
like a strong border wall down there by Mexico. Like it's like they but, already but have helicopters, itself. patrols, blimps, and all kinds of shit down there. Well, no, it's not and even just Sorry. and like throwing more wall at like some border security, like it's some big issue. is not going to change a thing. Like especially like with people coming in illegally, like most of them come by air. Like m a huge portion of them don't even try a border crossing. Yeah, exactly. And it's they go by, like, ridiculous, and it's a big waste of money. The funniest thing is, you don't necessarily even need like a physical border. The natural terrain itself is typically a deterrent for people walking across, because people do die in the desert. Like it's not like okay, I get to stop by like a Costco and pick up a water bottle. No, people like there's records of this. People will die in the desert trying to get inside the United States. So either they'll take visas when they can afford it, and they'll just overstay their visas. Or they're gonna try to find like some of the third route, like uh, like through the Gulf or something like that. Like it's never gonna be. Well, people still do it, of course, but this is typically for um, for like just drug dealers, I suppose. Like this is less so like the average, like uh, just like economic migrant who can't wait like uh, five to ten months, I suppose, to be legalized. Yeah, like so. the average person that like the average like most people that come over the wall or coming over from Mexico into the U.S. or they're not very rich. They are not prepared at all for a land crossing. Like exactly. the only people that are trying to make land crossings are just the drug cartels and shit. Basically, like, it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> but you know, like that's that, that's that's another thing. Just to go back, uh, like to uh, like Donald Trump allegedly helping America by like keeping migrants out, even illegal uh, migrants, killing. I mean, like. The border has directly hurt the farming industry. That's a big thing. Um, farmers, they don't have enough laborers, and it's like, you're doing this to yourselves. Like, do you not, how do you not understand that? And we're, we're all these people saying that, you know, like, saying how apparently Latinos are taking their jobs. Well, now that there's a lack of workers, they're, they can't be asked to go out and do this work now. These, these companies can't it's... maintain themselves because there's no one to, uh, to, to pay. Right, and, and you know, you know who who's hurting about it is is these same people because you go into the grocery store and guess what, prices this year on fresh fruit are they've gone out the yeah, roof. Exactly, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, it's like okay, it you doing this direct? I mean, labor labor in the end, regardless of what type of labor it is, it it it's it's a resource, right? I thought that the point of America first was to obtain all resources, start up a fucking empire again, and just suck the life out of the third world. Why? Like why? Like why are you not? Um, you're not putting your country like in in the uh, like in the fast lane, I suppose. You're hurting. Nobody, nobody said uh, that they were going to be logically consistent about this. They were just going to be yeah, angrily consistent. I mean, hell. I mean, if what makes America great again is to have 13 literalists inside the like inside the uh, White House right now, people who actually believe everything that happens inside the Bible, like that's that's not necessarily going to help America that much, especially when you think how much of the workforce is female, shouldn't actually work, you know? Come on, man. Well, you know they're they're in it to make themselves feel good, and that's what matters. Yeah, heels over reels. Yeah, and they're 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 the ones that always say that too. That's the funny part, isn't it? <laughs> it it's it's always how it is. It's it's always the the the, the it's projection. Really. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's always just projection. They're so with insecure them. that the, and they channel that in such a way where nothing is their fault. It's always someone else's fault. Yeah, that's like it's thing. not their fault that they have a job. It's because ex people have t are taking the jobs. Yeah, they've taken it away from them. So that, like that's. This is the whole reason why the, like, the white race is dying. Now, mind you, I have no children on my own. I, I've never reproduced. Really I've never had like intercourse in my life. But it's some it's some African American guy who's a lot more attractive than me, who's taking all the white women away from me. It's it's ridiculous. It's it's a mixture of you you since since you feel disenfranchised, someone has to have done this to you. And no, you can't blame the boss that didn't want to hire you because you don't have a like higher education no it's the it's the uh it's the fellow american it's the guy who's also looking for a job he's the darker than you 
Well, I mean, that same system was was under in place in, in slavery as well. You know, they would keep the slaves divided among themselves and fighting each other so that they wouldn't fight the master. And that's the same thing that we have here. Yep. Yeah, there's a bit of uncertainty, like, inside the United States. Like, it really much, like, when you look at it, really, this idea that it, there's, a, there's a white versus black or just, like, like just... Um, like average Americans fighting each other over like very superficial things it doesn't really exist we're fighting against the people who are actually hurting us which is like Donald Trump and his administration right now they're literally like cutting uh what was it what are they doing like uh not advertisement for like uh affordable health care but what was it oh shoot it's basically the people that help you get onto it He's cutting funding to that. Like, not a lot of people know about it. I forget about it specifically, though, so it, it was probably terrible to bring up. Holy shit. It's, it's, for me, it's the melatonin that's kicking in. I don't know what it is for you. Uh, but I think that's where we're going to cut it off tonight. Well, thank you, uh, Wakes and Wokes and Furs of all <laughs> persuasions. I'm really bad at outros. I guess we will see you guys next week. Yeah. Mash capitalism.